So we are recording this conversation on St. Patrick's Day here in 2022, and I I am excited, uh, Shereen, to talk with you because we have talked informally for years at events, um, that we've talked at things in back alleys of interactive um, peer group TV academy stuff, and we haven't really talked about the you part of this. I'm very excited to have this you as creative innovator conversation. Um, that is part of this whole adventure. So, um, hello, and thank you for joining us today. Hello, and thank you for having me. This is so exciting. Uh, when I got the email, I was like, oh, that's so cool. I love you and everything that you do. <laughs> and I'm so glad that, well, unfortunately, we missed each other the past two years at the TV Academy events. Um, but I did for a while have you come out to my class at USC, so that was fun. And that's and been part of my journey our... story, is coming and, and talking to your, your Viterbi engineering class about life and careers and how to be bold in their career choices. Um, yeah, I feel like my journey has been about getting my career going, but then helping others and giving back and making a difference in a lot of ways with careers. So. I'm glad that we crossed paths. And I think that happened accidentally. I think one night at the TV Academy event, we were walking to the car and we just started chatting. And I was saying, you know, I got this class at USC and unfortunately I'm not teaching there anymore, but I was for five years and it was a fun experience. And we were kind of sharing stories about teaching and you were saying you were doing stuff at UCLA. So it was interesting how I got to know that other part of you, which was exciting. Well, we're going to talk a lot about parts of you, and I want to talk about kind of how also you make decisions to do and not do things. So we'll come back to the to, to whatever we can talk about in various things, because I know that one thing is that you're about to make a big announcement, and we won't be talking about that today because it is not yet <laughs> Unfortunately, not yet. Yeah, I, as much as I'm itching to get it out there, I have a partner that doesn't allow it yet, and we're still technically under an NDA, so... Yeah, um, but there will be a big announcement very soon, and I'm super excited about it. I can't, I can't wait to make that announcement. So I'm going to ask everyone to go to the show notes, and we'll say this at the end that by then we might be able to announce it, or it will fall along with the show notes. So you can stay tuned on all of this. But in the meantime, what are you doing now that you can talk about? Yes, I'm still running my two startups in the tech space for kids, uh, Playworks, which is interactive media and we create IP that's transmedia and multi-platform. And our first brand is called WizGirls, which we're not officially launched on the gaming side yet. We're still in beta, but also other is coming soon, uh, which is actually not part of the announcement, but that's another thing. Uh, and then WizGirls Academy, which is my like technically social good, social impact uh, live extension of the games WizGirls. So uh, it's funny, because I started Playworks when I left uh, my toy business job when I, where I wanted to be like Tom Hanks in the movie Big, which I honestly never thought I would leave because I was obsessed with wanting to be like Tom Hanks in the movie Big ever since I was a little kid. And I went to Cal State Northridge to do that. And I had everyone, including my family and the Career Center at Cal State Northridge saying, you're crazy. We've never heard of anybody come major in child psychology and say they're going to be a toy tester. And Unfortunately for me, or fortunately, because I'm a big book nerd, I used to go to the library at the Oviatt Library at Cal State Northridge. There was this book, huge book, uh, like 600 pages, and it was all about careers. And I opened it one day and I was like, look, it says child psych major toy tester. I'm not crazy. Like, I know I've always like looked at media and been inspired and I took it to the career center. I said, look, look, I mean, we don't have Google now. We barely were starting to get email back then. Now I'm really aging myself. Um, and they still were like, no, 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 fill out this Myers-Briggs form, fill out this Myers-Briggs form. And I was like, I'm showing you a book that says child psych major toy tester career along with others. And they kept saying, no, 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 all, ch all ch child psych majors usually come and get a master's degree or a PhD they work in a school, they work in a hospital, they start a clinic. We've never, ever heard anyone ever tell us they're going to be a toy tester. So you know what? I was like, well, there's always a first. We've had a game tester on this show who came in the back door that way. And that was Arabian who came and talked about nice. the fact that that's how he cracked his way into the, that's right. I remember. the gaming space. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. I'm going to back you up further, but let's sort of step step into the present right now. If someone says, 
I want to hang out with her with Wiz Girls. What is Wiz Girls right now? It is hackathons, yes? Wiz Girls Academy is hackathons. Yeah, Wiz Girls is the games. Uh, we're still in beta, like I said, um, not officially, officially launched yet. But Wiz Girls Academy is where we do the healthy, balanced tech lifestyle hackathons. So we use the characters in the games. It's project-based learning. We're teaching real coding, HTML, CSS, and UI UX. And we're also, we partnered with General Assembly at the time and took their curriculum and we gamified it. And then we also do, like, during the course of our hackathon day, we do, like, meditation and fitness and healthy oh, wow. eating. We have, like, keynote speakers talk about how they got to their careers in the tech space or other, like, in engineering. Or uh, we had people from NASA JPL and SpaceX and all kinds of different fun entrepreneurs and stuff. And then at the end of the day, they pitch. Oh, and then we also use, sorry, ArcGIS. Uh, which is so I'm gonna have you slow platform. down a little bit because you've said many acronyms so far and some of our listeners yeah. will know what those acronyms are and some are going what the heck is she talking about <laughs> and I would say that even yeah. some of the 20 year olds I used to hang out with were going what is this ArcGIS thing and what yeah. is yeah so ArcGIS is the platform that Esri uses Esri is the first ever mapping company so you imagine like Google Maps but with data. So they were around way before Google Maps and there's a ton of data. So I met them. Actually, I met Jack Dangerman, the founder at Williams, a big event that he used to have every year for STEM. And he invited me to lunch and then we started chatting and I said, I would love to include, you know, ArcGIS, the platform in our hackathons. And he was like, sure, why not? Like we're doing stuff with Will.i.am. I'd love to extend, you know, to you. Now I'm assuming so your we... listeners do who, know who Will.i.am is, but they may or may not know that Will.i.am does his I am angel and does his whole, and actually has gone into robotics in the LAUSD um, with Dean Kamen. We'll come back. I'm going to haul you backwards. We're going to go backwards right. um, because um Usually there is a real great origin story and you have fabulous interwoven origin stories at how you got here. But in some ways you are an interesting combination of toys, games, child psychology, coding, social activism. When did you first, um, who introduced you to coding and what has that, their impact on your life been? That's a great question. So in the third grade, I had a female computer science teacher. I went to LAUSD public school, Fairburn Avenue Elementary in Westwood, right down the street from UCLA. And I had a female computer science teacher every day that taught us how to code Fortran on an Apple IIc green screen computer. And that's why I actually played Where in the World is Carmen San Diego. And I was obsessed at school every day. And at home, I had it too, but I also had Atari and Nintendo. So now I'm child of the 80s, as you can tell. Yeah. Um, but I watched the movie Big and it changed my life. I think if I didn't watch the movie Big, I probably would have stuck to coding and tech because she was super fashionable, really fun and bubbly. And every day, I, that was the biggest class I looked forward to, my computer science class, which was mandatory, by the way. And which was very advanced for that think, time. Very, very advanced for that time. So your school. Well, I mean, I, everybody says it. I mean, I was at LUSD public school. And when I was telling LUSD people, they were like, that's wild. I'm like, I know, because I was going to schools recently and there was no computer labs and stuff. And I was like, what happened here? And that's an yeah. interesting question as to what happened here. Have you gone back to tell her that she's had this impact on kicking off in your life? You know, I've been looking for her left and right. Her name is Miss Feldman. Uh, I can't find, I looked on Facebook, I Googled, I can't find her anywhere, which is really strange because I was actually supposed to do a commercial with her about this whole thing, but I couldn't find her. I was like, so if anybody, I don't know, I reached out, who's watching I reached out to some other student, uh, teachers, actually. I have one teacher that I'm still friends with on my Facebook that was at the same school, and she couldn't even find her, and I was like, oh, that's weird. I don't know. So if anybody listening yeah. or watching knows where Mrs. Mrs. Feldman is, please, you know, reach out. We'll, we'll give the contact information in the chat. So who knows? Maybe this will also help, help um, her, her get connected with you. Yeah, I would love to thank her because she was like super fashionable and super techie and 
I mean, I never even heard of, like, like when people say, oh, you know, girls shouldn't do tech or coding and gaming. I'm just like, I don't understand because I grew up with equality. She never pointed a finger and said, you're a girl. You shouldn't do that. We did it all together. So this all this stuff is foreign to me. And actually, um, coding was much more dominantly women, actually, early on. There's really interesting directions In the it's 80s. done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. not every, this is where I go, not everyone knows. Not everyone knows the movie Big. That may seem really strange to you, but not everyone knows the movie Big. So if you were going to explain Big to someone who didn't know it, why it was inspirational to you, other than, of course, Tom Hanks is really charming in it. <laughs> and much That's funny. People usually ask me, you want to be a guy? And I was like, no, no, no. He was a child. He had a wish. I don't want to give the movie away. You got to watch it. I think it's on Netflix or something now. I'm sure you can find it. Um, but I think it's 1987. I'm not mistaken. But he, as a kid, um, was able to he's a kid. inspire. Uh, and... He he grows up one overnight, basically, and turns into an adult. And he has to, like, I guess, support himself. So he decides to get a job at a toy company, which I think it was actually modeled around Mattel because the logo was very similar. They, they don't use Mattel. I'm sure there was product placement there. Um, so, yeah, so that's how he gets a job uh he i guess runs into the head of the company at fa schwartz while he was playing on the piano his with his feet on the piano he, he wouldn't leave him alone and he was testing toys doing focus groups and ironically at csun when i was doing my child psych undergrad uh degree and i also did a little minor in family and computer uh, uh family and consumer studies mm -hmm. uh we had a one-way um play lab, we called it, where we watched the kids grow developmentally and we had to write re research reports. So we had focus groups, but not obviously for marketing and products. We had it for the kids live. So I had that training for everything that I started doing at Mattel. You actually had a research lens, which is unique also to have a research and observational behavioral studies lens yeah. coming in to creative play. In school. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And and that's why, and I would tell the career center, I'd be like, look, we did this. Like, I had to write my research reports on these kids since they were XYZ ages, like, throughout the years of me being in school here. So what are you saying? I mean, this is exactly what I, I was, like, literally training for being at Mattel. And they just, like, were like, and I was like, well, and then also the research that I've done is I can go to Mattel, which is in El Segundo. Technically, Just down the I went street. to Northridge, so it was north. It was like south, yep, yep. next to, you know, next to the, uh, airport -ish. the airport. Or I could go to Hasbro, which is in Rhode Island, and I prefer, obviously, to stay in L.A. It just makes more sense. So I'm going to stop you um, and kind of go sideways a bit. What did your parents think of all this? Oh, my God, they thought I was nuts. Parent, my parents thought I was nuts because, obviously, I'm Persian, and I always make a joke. I say I came on a magic carpet ride to L.A. when I was two, and people look at me like, what? Magic carpet? Really? Like, like yeah, magic carpet. Uh, I've never been back to Iran. I don't know what it's like. But they didn't have market research in Iran, so, you know. So your parents it was saw like, what? this young woman who had Fortran and coding experience, loved games, found child psychology and game test designer in a big, thick career book, and then thought that, were they encouraging of this? I mean, Cal State Northridge is a, is a good, solid public institution, safe, quality institution. Were they just kind of going, she'll get over it? Yeah, they thought it was a phase, uh, but also I, my driving force was really the movie Big, just because that was my sample in real life. Like I had the sample in school every day of doing those research reports in the you know child play lab, you know, type of thing. Um, and I think the lab school still exists because that's what they do for that major. But the real the real deal for me was the movie Big. I didn't care that it was the movie. I didn't care Tom Hanks was a guy. I didn't care any of that stuff. I was like, he tested toys. He had fun every day going to, to work. He had the corner office. He had the toys. They had the whole thing with that Empire State Building. And he, the people were messing with him that he couldn't make the right thing or something. No, it's not the right, not the right toy, whatever. But he had, you know, the big kid inside of him was like, these are the toys that kids will like. So, yeah. Did you then graduated from, did you intern when you were in school? Did you try stuff out? Did you raise your hand and go, Mattel, 
look at me i'm right here i am yeah so i did i actually so when my parents and friends so i had friends that were going to like ucla majoring in psychobio and wanting to be doctors and lawyers you know the typical like persian jobs or whatever typical jobs like engineer whatever those things and i kept saying no 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 i want to be a toy tester and people were like why don't you just try other things so at one point i was like maybe i should do nutrition i like nutrition i did volunteer in the hospital i can't stand it i was like get me out of here after a week i couldn't and once they're like you got to do a rotation in the psych ward i was like i'm out goodbye <laughs> like thanks i can't do this i shouldn't laugh for some people um, every for every job there's somebody who actually gets passionate about it um, and I tend to think there's things I yeah. love that other people hate, but yeah, it's nice to know that environmental thing early. I don't want to yeah, be there. And, and it, the yeah, it made a huge difference because honestly, like I love nutrition and for myself, I'm really like picky about food and everything because I have allergies, whatever, but like not as a career, not something I would be happy with doing, you know, as a career. So I'm glad that I figured that out. And going through the motions, it was like I had graduated and I had one professor from CSUN that was my champion and we still keep in touch. And he kept saying, you can do this. We're going to make this happen. You'll figure this out. And like I said, there was no Google at the time. We barely were getting emails. I was literally going to the library and figuring out, okay, so there's a women in toys annual, like event where they give awards in New York. And then there's like this toy group, I guess, we didn't have meetups back then, but they had like this toy group in LA, people from Mattel and smaller toy companies that would get together. So I found those places and I went there and I talked to the people. At the time, there was this thing called GameWorks, which the guy oh, that was yeah. the head was the uh, head of the whole thing. So I talked to him and I said, what do you think? And he was like, well, sorry, I can't really help you. But like, you know, I'll, I'll put out feelers for anybody that I know is looking for to hire new people and what have you. Then I went to a UCLA job fair. This is actually really funny because I went through like a recruiting firm that was in Manhattan Beach and I went through six or seven different recruiters from the same company during that job fair at UCLA. And then they said, come to our office or, you know, the president of the recruiting company wants to meet you. And I said, okay, cool. This is Manhattan Beach. It's right by Mattel. This is awesome. So I walked in and I sat down and she looks at me and she goes, college students that graduate they don't know their right hand from their left hand and i was like wait what like i'm telling you i want to be a toy tester i've done my research it's either mattel or hasbro i'm not going to rhode island please it's down the street mattel just get me someone in hr she would not stop she was like oh you know college students they don't know what they're talking about i'm like i'm telling you exactly what i want woman what are you saying like she's like i have a perfect job for you it's this company called jack specific it's oh, right off of well, Jack, It's a beautiful toy company. I was going to say that was an and interesting I said, selection. Yes. But. but I said, do they have a research department? And she goes, no. And I said, what am I going to do there? She's like, oh, it's a customer service position. You just need to get your foot in the door. I was like, that's a dead end job woman. Like she pissed me off so badly. I left her. I drove to Mattel on my way back. I, at the time, had sent in my resume and I got a postcard. So I walked in and the security guard was like, can I help you? And I said, yes. Can you get me someone in the HR department? And he said, do you have an appointment? And I said, no. And he, he looked at me and he said, well, this is a high secure building. I can't just let you in. And I said, I know. Can you just get me someone in the HR department? I l sent in my resume. I got a postcard. I'm here to get a job. I don't need a postcard. Like, please. <laughs> we went back and forth for 10 so minutes. So this is you, bold as brass, 21-year-old, yes? Yeah, I was like, yeah, around that. I think around that age. Yeah, definitely. Um, I was like, look, when I get a job here, you're going to be like, there's that crazy girl. And I walked out because he was pissing me off. I was like, why is nobody listening to me? I know exactly what I want. Just get me the damn person. <laughs> yeah. For those people who've been listening to the podcast, you'll this may ring true with the Chris Zida interview who did this for months and months at Disney. And that was the only place he was applying for and finally got the opportunity to come in by someone who was sympathetic to the story. So you were persistent. Yes. Super persistent. So on my way back, I was thinking like, how do I do this? I'm connecting the dots. You know, Steve Jobs commenced his speech, how he says connecting the dots moving forward. Well, I didn't have time for that. I was already you know, like going backwards, I was connecting to that to move forward. So I don't know why, but it got, I got a like hit of like, I drove by Otis 
And I was like, wait, what is this place? Oh, this is cool. I'm going to look this up. So I look it up and it said they have a toy design program. That's a This is Otis, Otis College of Design, also here in Los Angeles. Yeah. Yeah. So I was on my way back from Mattel. Well, it, a, lot, a lot of interesting synchronicities happened. And I basically um, called up Otis and I said, I want to meet with the toy design chairperson. And he said, sure, come to my office. So I walked in and he was like, beautiful man wearing fashion designer clothes and he had toys everywhere in, in his like office and I was like this is the coolest thing I just graduated from bachelor's do you have a master's program for toy design because I'm super creative I would love to do this and he goes no unfortunately we don't and I said um what do you think I should do because I really want to be like Tom Hanks movie big he laughed and he said why don't you call my friend he's the head of research ask him out for lunch uh ask him for an information interview he's a nice guy he'll do it tell him I sent you and let's see how it goes. And I said, okay, cool, thank you, Mr. Martin Caveza. So next day I went and called his friend who was the head of research. He actually picked up the phone, his assistant did it, it was a miracle. And I said, Martin from Otis said I should call you because I'd love to learn more about your job. I wanna take you out for lunch and you know, do an information interview. And he said, well, I don't have time for lunch, why don't you just come over? Okay, so I walk into Mattel now with an appointment. <laughs> Waving at the same security guard. <laughs> I was like, remember this crazy girl? She's back. <laughs> yeah, so I walk in. I walk into his office, super nice corner office. He's got like this amazing poster of Jet Setter, which is my favorite um, shag. He was really into shag. I was, I, I was obsessed with shag because of him. Uh, my old boss, Michael Shore. Um, so I walk in, I shake his hand, and then I hand him a business card. And he looks at me and he says, you're an entrepreneur. And I said, wait, what? No, 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 no. Uh, what are you talking about? I said, I want to be like Tom Hanks in Movie Big. I'm here to learn about your job. He goes, I've never seen anything like this. You just graduated from college and you handed me a business card with a link to your resume on it. That's super innovative. I've never seen anything like it. You're an entrepreneur. He wouldn't stop. He was like, you're an innovative entrepreneur for like 10 minutes. And I was like, no, no, no. No, no that's no. not me. I just want I don't know what you're talking about. You. <laughs> I was like, no, I thought this is cool. Yes, it stands out, but um, I want to get a job here. <laughs> so I'm going to cut it short because you've got lovely stories. But so you were at, at Mattel. So you were in kind of the kingdom of, of exactly what you wanted, which is a very large and complex organization. And it's more complex now than then. And then you left there to go with these other strange, fabulous dolls. Yeah. So, yeah. So basically after nine months, he finally created a position for me. Uh, and then I was at Mattel for three years. And then I went through the motions of I need to probably go back to school because I either needed a master's or a PhD to grow at Mattel apparently. Um, and then I was debating on going back to school and then I found out MGA was right around the corner from CSUN. So that's how that started. So yeah, basically started the research department at MGA from scratch and also was a brand manager for Bratz within six months. So you, before talking about Bratz, have mentioned fashion twice, one about your third grade teacher, one about the guy at Otis, and then Bratz is a fashion, fashion doll with different fashion sense than Barbie. For those who don't know yeah, the Bratz. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I was I was always obsessed with fashion too, and my my boss Michael Short Mattel was super fashionable too. So yeah, A thread cutting through all of this. Yeah, so, exactly. So you've shared the story of Deepak Chopra, um, inspiring you to be in, to walk into your inspiration. Can you share with us briefly how that was a pivot point for you? Sure, yeah. So when I was having my existential crisis at MGA, uh, I, well, I want to say it happened like two and a half, almost three years in to having the corner office and the toys and everything I ever wanted. I would hear parents always complaining about how there weren't positive role models for their daughter, uh, Bratz and Barbie, and even Spider-Man, which I was like, I have nothing to do with Spider-Man. I don't know where that came from. I was really having a serious existential crisis and wanting to find myself. So... I did like raw uh, food classes, like I did like life coaching, I did all these things. And I didn't even know who Deepak Chopra was at the time, but he 
I saw him at an event and he told me to give back when I asked him, what do you do when you get your dream? He kept saying, you have to give back. And I was like, I volunteer my time. I give money to charity. I do all that stuff. What do you mean? He was like, no, 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 trust me. You'll figure it out. I was like, can you tell me give back to who, what, where, like another word, please. He was like, no, no, trust me. You'll figure it out. So that was like my big clue. Um, I call it now on the tech yellow brick road. And yeah, that was Deepak's like, I guess the biggest like two, two liner clue that I've ever had in my life. And then Simon Sinek was the next one who wrote the book called Start With Why. And I asked him the same question at his book signing in LA. And he said, what's your purpose and why? And I was like, why is everybody giving me like a dangling clue, but not like a clear go do this thing? Like, well, let's, let's talk was, about that again, a bit. Connecting because dots. some of the question gets to be, you know, I see where the sun is on the horizon, but the, how do I figure out what the bleep to do to get there, right? And, and you've had a lot of really great inspiration. How do you decide how to choose between options when building with girls, when building out your programs? How do you decide what to say yes to being such a driven, creative entrepreneur? How do you kind of read the tea leaves and decide where to put the spade in the ground? That's a good question. Uh, I think it comes with, uh, in a sense, it's an intuitive inner knowing, but it's also what does the world want? Because now I'm on my journey of giving back and making a difference. So it's interesting because actually Wiz Girls Academy almost didn't exist because I re resisted it for nine months. And now it's, it's going back and forth. Like nine months, it took me to get a job at Mattel. And now nine months, the White House, Obama administration, White House was saying, do coding programs for kids, do hackathons, do this, do that. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm bootstrapping a tech startup. I do not have time to do another thing. No, 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 no. But every time I turned around speaking somewhere, parents would walk up to me or like walking at USC, crossing the street. This woman literally dragged me by my collar and told me that I needed to teach her daughter how to code this summer. Like there was always a constant message coming and I was like, no, 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 I'm good. Uh, resisting, I'm resisting. But that's what happens. So when I say no, it doesn't mean no forever because I'll get the signs and messages that I have to say yes. Is it is it saying no, though, as a bit of a, a defensive measure on your own creative energy? So you can't do everything, so you need to focus? Or do you find that you tend to put, you've commented on the fact, uh, are you a gamer or a gardener in your, your TEDx youth talk? Um, you know, do is it that you believe that you have to plant seeds but can't garden everything? How do you kind of decide? I mean, it's a challenge, especially for female entrepreneurs, to try to not do everything and not spread yourself so thin. How do you decide what to not do? So it sounds like you've been a lot of sort of time-based push and pull. How do you know when to close the door? How do you know when to open the door? I think it goes back to the gut feeling and also like what signs and messages I'm getting to. I know it sounds cliche, but when I said no so many times to the hackathons and the coding, it was because I was like, there's all these other programs. I'm not just going to be another program. Right. So like when they kept coming to me, I was like, there's girls who code, black girls code. Like there's a million of these things. I can't do another thing. And by the way, I learned how to code Fortran back in the 80s, which is a very different ball game now. I can't teach these kids Fortran. Like, and what I see is there's mostly scratch for the younger kids. So like, how do we fill in the gap? And I think that's where the creative innovator came in. And I was like, wait, General Assembly has these coding programs. They had just launched in LA. But for Why adult can't we people. partner with them? <laughs> for adult people. For adults, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and actually they even resisted me. And I said, you know what? I'm going to send, when I started, when I came to the point of like, literally every time I turn around, somebody's telling me I need to teach coding and doing hackathons. I said, I'm just going to send you directly to General Assembly because I don't have that, I don't have curriculum. I don't have the capacity. And right now I'm in the throes of, looking to raise money for Playworks, but also building out, like I'm hiring game designers. I'm like, you know, building out the startup, the first one, right? So it came back to, I have to, 
I'm going to send everybody. And, and after three weeks, General Assembly called and we're like, let's have a meeting to discuss this because we're getting a lot of requests and we don't know what to do. Like we don't, we don't have kids capacity and we have a liquor license. That's what they told me. They're like, we can't have kids here on our campuses. <laughs> so, so you, so in many ways you connect dots together. So um, you, yeah, exactly. you scale you, especially in the service based education based business by tapping partners. So right. partnering with the White House, partnering with LAUSD, coming back full circle there. Instead of trying to scale you and burn you out, you tap into people to tie missions together. Is that a decent summary? Yeah, that makes sense. I think the partnership is huge, a part of what, what I'm all about, because obviously I can't do everything. And going back to your question earlier, it's like, yes, planting the seeds, but I can't do it all at the same time. Although I come from you know, kids brands and that's what they have. It's not like Bratz just was the Bratz doll. We had like a fashion line. We had like an animated series that I worked on. You know, we had like all these different things and that's what I plan to do for Wiz Girls as well, but I can't do it all at the same time. So how do you um, reflect on your own impact and success? Because in many ways you have been planting seeds with girls learning to code and be inspired into tech and connecting people similar to what you got started with in third grade, right? So that, that in fact, you've kind of amplified her work and what you've done. How do you measure that it's working? And how do you know when you, how do you feel when you've done enough and can sit there and say, I'm going to hold this and just be happy at this point in time? How do you, how do you kind of self-measure the success of this stuff? That's a great question. I usually see it in the eyes of the kids that we have been working with. So like seeing them go from, I'm not interested in tech, the girls and the boys in the mi minority areas, because that was kind of like my deal with the Obama White House. So seeing them go from, I'm not interested in coding or tech or being a game designer or any of these techie careers to, I want to do this now. And look, look, I have my startup. I'm pitching you now at the end of the day of our hackathons. That's where I see the success because I'm literally planting the seed for them to make a difference in their lives and giving them the tools. So that's how I see success. But I'm also an overachiever and also super driven and you know passionate and wild and crazy like that. I guess Steve Jobs said it's the crazy one. So I'm always like, wait, we're not doing enough. Like, it's not enough. Like, we need this, we need this, we need this. Obviously, I can't do it all at the same time. And that's what I get frustrated about. Because I'm like, I have all these things that I want to do. How come we haven't launched the games yet? You know, all this stuff. But it's literally like, you have to plant the seed. And that's why I go back to my TED talk of like, are you a gamer or a gardener? Because planting the seed, and it, it took me a really long time when Jordan Metzner told me what that means to figure it out. I thought he was on something when he first said that. Because I, I asked him, like, what do you do? from a purely traditional toy entertainment kids background to focused on gaming and tech. Like, how do you, and he literally turned to me and said, you have to be a, a gardener. And I was like, what? Like, are you smoking something? <laughs> like, no. A toy gardener. Hey, now I get it completely. Plant and toys. No. So. Um, now I get it completely. It so how, how do you know when you're done? So how do you know when to move to the next thing? Because you, you've moved to the next thing several times. You've moved from Mattel to Bratz. You've moved from Bratz into your own companies. You've been percolating this for quite a while. You've picked up partner programs. How do you close doors? That's a good question. I feel like when the universe says it's time, I follow, like I said, signs and messages very, very closely and clearly. And I feel like there's no random accidents. Like everything is kind of divinely timed, at least for me, it has been like running into someone at a party over the summer has led to this new project that's coming. And then like two days after I met her, I ran into her on the street, like walking in my neighborhood. Like I've never walked there, never seen her before. Like, you know what I mean? So like those things happen in my life where I, again, connect the dots going forward. But for me, I feel like it's never done just because I've just only just begun to like launch a brand and then a brand that has so many different moving parts 
just like my, you know, my, I, I know how that works in my world, but most people don't understand how it's all connected because people would be like, oh, you're doing so much stuff and teaching and advising for Bixel and doing stuff for the mayor's office and da, 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 da. And I was like, look, for me, I see it's all connected. This is like that kind of like the tree of life for it. You might not see it and it doesn't make sense to you, but then I would be like, yeah, Musk does a million things. Not that I'm comparing myself to him, but I mean, people that do and get shit done are doers. I'm a doer you're not in and a I single, won't stop until you're I You're not do. in a single box, right? But yeah, I can never be in a box. I don't do well in a box. In fact, and that, that's actually funny that you say that because my boss at Mattel was trying to keep me in the box. And I was like, no, 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 not, not happening. So we're nearly at the end of our conversation. We have covered the waterfront. We're going to have in the show notes all these puzzle pieces for people who would like to tap in and take a look at it more. What have we not talked about other than the thing you can't talk about yet? What have we not talked about that you want to mention before we close up? That's a good question. I feel like everyone has a purpose and a mission on this planet. And I say this all the time, but I feel like once you know what that is, it's not like it's ever handed to you on a silver platter, but you have to work for it. And you know, instinctively what that is. Like for me, at first, I never thought I would ever leave the toy business. And technically, I don't ever want to make physical toys for kids, but I'm doing things that are in the digital space that are similar in a sense. But as we move technologically and become more advanced with tech, I'm like, okay, I'm super heart centered. I'm super here to make a difference and give back and everything that I've heard people say that I should be doing now. And now I connect the dots, right? So like what Tom Hanks did for me, I'm doing as a give back for the next generation of kids with technology and gaming and making girls excited about STEM and gaming and tech and boys from the inner city. Like that was, technically my focus initially. It's like, I always say we're girl focused and boy inclusive because I think it's really important. We don't live in a bubble. Um, but also I am creating a lifestyle tech brand for kids and that's never been done before. So it's always being that, you know, first innovator and being creative in that space to be understood because it's always been like, wait, what are you doing? Really? That, bro, oh, that's interesting. Okay. Wait, you're meditating with the kids? Like you're, and then we did Job Corps uh, for a week summer camp, and they were like, you're going to do yoga? Like, I thought we thought the kids were going to do coding. I was like, no, we have to do all of it. Like, we can't just sit on a computer for, like, a full week. There's no way. Ahead of your time, ahead of the pandemic. And then sort of closing comment on this, that you have been running, you have been in a, in a shifting of all this during the pandemic when a hackathon is a generally live person event. So now you're kind of sprouting those wings again. Um, how can people get a hold of you if they would like to participate in what you're doing? And what do you need? I think you commented before we got started that interns, you need interns. <laughs> yes, because I'm getting a lot of requests for hackathons in person again. So I'm super excited about that. Um, yes, interns are much needed. And you can get a hold of me at my uh, website or Instagram or my website email, which is shearing at play dash dash sign works, W E R K S.com. Um, but yeah, we'll interns, in I definitely need notes. interns. And, and I guess asking you a little of a non sequitur question, um, franchise, is there ability for someone who thinks, Oh, this is so cool. I would love to do, cause you're mostly in California with this. Yes. With the hackathon for now. Yeah. Yeah. We've gotten requests to do other cities and countries actually. Um, but yeah, mostly that's a good question. Franchise. I haven't looked into that yet, but I was thinking about maybe licensing out a curriculum for a while. I've been open to different things. It's just that path hasn't been open technically. And that's going back to your earlier question, I think is like how to, if I push so hard, sometimes it doesn't work. And I'm like, okay, well, it's not the right time. It's just not. Thank you for being on this show and everybody. Thank you for enjoying this and please join us for the next installments of creative innovators. And I'm very glad that we could hang out together and tell stories together uh, for people to get inspired. Thank you so much for having me. This was awesome. Oh.